Happy February and welcome back to the next live episode of Season Sunflower Hour. As always, welcome to the family. We are so happy that you're here. We're so happy that you're spending your Tuesday night with us. And if you haven't done it already, please make sure you hit that follow and subscribe button. And while you are at it, don't do it now because we want you to stay tuned. We don't want you to miss any of the great things coming up tonight. But as soon as this show is over, please put it on your to-do list to head over to our YouTube channel. Make sure you give us a follow there because we're going to be incorporating YouTube a lot more in the coming future. There's a lot of really exciting things coming and we want you to see all of it, not to miss a beat, and YouTube is going to be a part of that. So if you head over to YouTube again after the show, because we don't want you to miss a second of tonight's episode, but make sure you head over to YouTube. It's at ALSA Chicago one and follow us for all the good stuff. And of course, as always, follow us here on Twitch to stay with us for all the great things happening. And as always, we have so many great things happening, and February is no exception. This is another big month for the Greater Chicago Chapters ALS Association. We have so many great things in the works coming up. And in fact, just tonight, right before the show started, we had our living well, oh my goodness, Sam's going to kill me with the name. We went live <laughs> with our, um, what do we call this, Sam? Seminar? Goodness. Yay, I'm glad you guys are tuning in and watching me forget all of my words tonight. But anyway, we we had um, Living Well with ALS. Thank you, Sam. There we are. Sam always comes in and helps me out when I need her most. So just before the show tonight, we had Living Well with ALS program. It went live. If you were not there, which is free, by the way, and there's a lot of great information that happens with that. That happens before the show, but the recording will go up tomorrow on February 8th. So if you are interested, if you know anybody who is living with ALS, someone who is caregiving for someone with ALS, this is some great information. The topic is intimacy with ALS, and there's a lot of things to cover in that. So that will go up on YouTube tomorrow on the 8th, so you guys can watch that and hear from all the experts on that specific topic. And also, something super, super exciting, registration is now open for the Chicago Walk to Defeat ALS. That is happening on June 3rd in a Cantigny Park that's going to be here before we know it. So if you are interested at all in either walking, in volunteering, in starting your own walk team, or even supporting as a business if you want to donate and support a walk team, all of those options are possible. And you can find all that information on the website, alsachicago.org. And the incredible Miraculous Sam has already got that link up in the comment section for you. So make sure you mark all of those because as you know, the comment section will be full of very helpful links for all the things I'm telling you about. So check that out. The registration's open and the walk is June 3rd. And we cannot forget it is almost February 10th. On Friday, it is the first look for charity. It is the night of the year. It is huge. If you haven't got your tickets yet, good news. There is still time. There are still a few left. So make sure you snatch those up. You will get to be one of the very small group of people that get to come in and check out the entire Chicago Auto Show at McCormick Place before it's open to the general public. This is huge. It's a great night. And you know what? Even if you're not a car enthusiast, I am not myself. And I can promise you it is an incredible night because not only are there cars, but there is amazing entertainment. There's music. There's food. There's drinks. All of it is incredible. You get to get dressed up. And the best part of it is as if having a great night out and getting to view all of the happenings before the general public did, if that wasn't enough, well, a portion of the ticket sales goes to the ALS Association so you could have an incredible night out and help those living and battling with ALS. It is a huge night. We want you to be a part of it. The link is already up in the comment section. Grab your tickets because it is coming up February 10th in a couple days, so you don't want to miss out on that. And finally, finally, one more great announcement to hit you with before we bring our guest in. The Christie Clinic Illinois Race Weekend is coming up at the end of April in Champaign. That's another great event. It is for anybody we're looking for runners we're looking for volunteers and don't be scared by the word runner because that tends to scare me there is something for 
everyone at this event. There's a one mile, there's a 5K, a 10K, a relay, a half marathon, a walk. All the options are possible. And again, if you don't want to actually run or be a part of any of those activities, we are also looking for volunteers. And it ends... All of the things end in Memorial Stadium, which is really cool. So you get to get on the field. You get to be a part of that. And again, you get to help those living with ALS. So that alone makes it an incredible time. Make sure you check that out. That link is also up in the comment section. I'm telling you, Sam is just the bomb. I don't know what we would do without her. (laughs) So make sure you check out that comment section. All the good things I just threw at you real fast are up there. And as always, you can reach out to us anytime if you have any questions and if you want to get involved and know what's coming up in the chapter. You can always check out alsachicago.org or reach out to Sam and myself. I know we put our emails up there all the time, but you can always find us at season at alsa.org if you want to reach out by email. Now, Happy Valentine's Day. Happy pre-Valentine's Day to everyone. February is one of the best times of the month, and we should be celebrating love all year round, but a little bit extra special on the month of February with Valentine's. And speaking of love, speaking of all the good things, you guys know how much I love a good love story. Well, sometimes not all love stories have the happiest of endings, but There are some great memories along the way. And here to share her story is one of our very own Greater Chicago Chapter ALSA Association Ambassadors, Anne Anderson Davies. Anne, welcome. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. I'm delighted to be here today. Well, we are so excited to have you. And this is, I know this is some heavy stuff. And so first off, before we even get into it, I want to, I was reading a, a, sort of a letter. I'm going to say a letter Mm -hmm. that you wrote into the chapter. It was published in the review. And I just want to catch everyone up to speed on what's what's going on. So I didn't know this myself. It shocked me. I was reading it this morning. I was in tears (laughs) at all of this. I don't, what you and your family have been through has been insane. And I know one of the things that hit me most was sort of that first line that, that for you on this specific day, it was just a normal day. You were eating breakfast with your completely healthy 46 Mm -hmm. year old husband and everything pretty much at the drop of a hat completely changed with something as small as a twitch in his thumb. And fast forward, um, endless doctor appointments being referred specialist to specialist to doctor to doctor, test after test, a very long diagnosis process. And then finally a diagnosis came. And I mean, even just in your story, the way it was told to you breaks my heart that it was, hey, you have ALS, there's no cure, you're going to die get your affairs in order. This is what it is. Here we are. And then, I mean, fast forward, things were getting harder. He was losing mobility pretty quickly. He went in for sort of a routine surgery on a couple uh, herniated discs in his back. And that was it. He never walked again. He never spoke again. He wasn't breathing on his own. And unfortunately, his story was over. So All of that, I don't say that lightly. I mean, those words are very heavy. Everything you and your family went through, you had a 14-year-old son at the time who had to, as you said, had to step up and grow up real fast. You, The two of you became instant caretakers. So what is that like to go through all of this whirlwind so quickly to be losing your husband and have to be a caretaker and a wife? Well, it's overwhelming, um, but you adjust to what your new normal is. You know, uh, our our normal was coming home from work, both of us, my husband and I, having dinner with the family, doing checking homework, <laughs> watching some TV before we went to bed, and all of a sudden it changed dramatically and rapidly. Um, so what what my son Joe, who I think is probably watching. Uh, What we discovered was that our new normal was so different than anyone. Um, He had to come home. He had to grow up very, very quickly uh, before Don went into the Mayo Clinic or went into a nursing home. Um, We would come home. I would come home from lunch at my job at a college. I would make sure he ate. Don could no longer use his hands or his arms. Um, he, and this happened very rapidly. Um, he, so we had to feed him. 
Uh, Joe would help me bathe him in the shower. I would take care of all of Don's bathroom um, situations because no son should have to do that for their father because his hands and his arms were completely useless. And once he went into a nursing home, I would have to leave work, go to the nursing home, spend several hours with him. Night times were very difficult for Don because he, all of a sudden, in a blink of an eye, he could no longer speak, breathe, eat, move, um, anything on his own. He had surgery. He could do all that before we walked into surgery. So, you know, something occurred during surgery, which I don't know what happened, but he did have ALS. So um, I had to go from work to the nursing home. I stayed with him till he had what I called jokingly his cocktail, which is a mixture of drugs that was a um, anxiety, anti-anxiety medication, a sleep medication, because he was terrified at night because he couldn't move. They gave him the call button, but he couldn't use it. So at night, he was on his own till somebody checked on him in the morning. So I stayed with him till he fell asleep because he was scared. And mm -hmm. I would come home and check on Joe. And Joe was 14 when his dad died. And I would come home probably somewhere between 1130, 12 o'clock, you know, 1130 at night, 12 o'clock. And come home and have to kind of decompress a little bit. And then I'd have to get up and go to work because we needed my income. Don didn't have any. He didn't have any life insurance. When you have ALS, it takes over $200,000 a year to take care of someone. Um, so I would have to so work. much more than on, that even. Right. He was on my insurance. So I had to keep doing this. Um, and I wasn't. I had friends and family who fortunately were supportive and would bring meals over. But, you know, I, I was torn between being with my son and helping him grieve and going to work. And I had to do both. And it, you know, it was an incredibly hard and difficult time. Um, but we had, we had some support and, um, People would say to me, I don't know how you're doing this. And I would say, give me an easier option. I'll take it. But right now, this is what our normal is. Yeah. You know, we didn't have the option of if there was an easier way, I would have taken it. But, but yeah. there wasn't. And you just never know how strong you are until you're really, really tested. Yeah. That, that is that is so true. That's such a great statement. And a, as you were talking, you had mentioned that friends would help out. They would bring food. Um, I do want to talk about this for a second. What is it? Because I think you're in it. You now mm. have you know what ALS is. You mm. know firsthand the experience. People that have been in this situation are sort of ALS family. It's deeper than, as you were saying, sympathy. It's we've walked in those shoes. We know what you're going through. But people that haven't, and I wish that for everyone. Absolutely. I can't wait to get to a world where no one's ever, no one knows what this experience is like. But for those on the outside that don't, when, when a friend, when a family member, when a loved one is in your position now and walking in your shoes, what can they do? What is most helpful? Because I think a lot of people think, oh gosh, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help. Um, if you could just give even just one thing that someone could do, what is the what would have been the most helpful in that situation? Yep. Um, well, Don's, you took about a year to get Don diagnosed. And he died one year after his diagnosis. So it happened incredibly quickly. But people would say to me, oh, I'm here for you. Let me know what I can do. But I didn't know what I needed. My world was spinning out of control. So what I would recommend is asking if, if you're in that situation where you have ALS or, you know, you're taking care of a family member, kind of guide people on what you need. And if you don't know, say, what can you do for me? 
How can you help me? Can you go and get my groceries? Can you come and stay with my spouse for an hour so I can go get a haircut or I can, I know, look at me, or I can, um, <laughs> um, you know, go out to lunch with a, a girlfriend or whatever. I need a reprieve. I wanted one hour where my life wasn't about ALS. But ALS is a very isolating disease because, and, and, and it can be because when you look at Don, he went from breathing and eating and walking to none of that. It's very difficult for people to see him like that. Yeah. So people, a lot of people who we were very close to had a really hard time seeing him that way. And, and I imagine some of his family members. Yeah. And obviously, and for Don, it can't be easy either for that individual living and battling ALS. No. And they, what, what I think there are some myths that people don't understand about ALS. For example, their mind's completely intact. They know they can't move, but they still have sensation. So yeah. I think people sometimes think that they're paralyzed in a way that they can't feel anything, but they feel everything. They just can't respond to it. So when he had like a, a sore on his ear from lying in bed for so long and he couldn't speak, I had to kind of figure out what he was trying to tell me. And eventually he could no longer move his lips. So I had to kind of ask him questions through eye movements. Okay. Um, you know, so that, that was, that was quite the challenge. Um, yeah. Would you say communication was one of the largest challenges? Because there absolutely. are so many, I mean, the list is so long of what ALS, the problems it brings into your life, but yeah. What would you say was the biggest challenge throughout that journey that you and Don and your son were on? The biggest challenge. That's a really difficult question because the challenge of going through it is different than the challenge after it ends. And the, uh, the challenge after it ends well, the hardest day of my life is the day that I signed the papers to take him off life support. And if you looked at my signature from before and you looked at my signature on the day I signed those papers, they are not the same. Mm -hmm. I was determining whether a human being was going to live or not. That's not a decision I wanted to make for one of my dogs let alone my husband. Mm -mm. Um, so that was, but it was a decision that you made go honoring his wishes. It's well, what I wanted. asked him, you know, I got really good at lip reading and then we got into this eye movement thing. Um, and I asked him, he was about five months in on five or six months in on a, um, ventilator, which I wouldn't wish on anybody. And, mm -hmm. He, I asked him, do you want to stop this? And he said, yes. And I asked him, do you know what that means? And he said, yes. So he had absolutely no quality of life at that point. And it was just the, um, the most humane and incredible decision to make for him. And I made sure over and over again that that's what he wanted. And he did. And on the day that they took him off life support, because they took the ventilator off him, yeah. he could speak because they opened up that tracheostomy. And he said to me three things. He said, you've taken such good care of me. Make sure Joe goes to college. And I'm tired. And he closed his eyes and he never opened them again. And two days later, he finally passed away, which was kind of interesting because we were told it would be like an hour once they took him off the, the um, ventilator. So it took two days, which then meant, you know, my son and I were there all the time and, um, 
there were um, there were a lot of tears. Yeah. But his peace finally came, and we were very grateful. And but it was only after he died that I learned about the ALS Association. Yeah. So the doctor at a prestigious hospital who finally diagnosed him. Um, I found out later that really what we should have been provided with was support systems, like linking us up with the yeah. ALS Association, Greater Chicago Chapter. Um, we should have had a social worker there. We should have had other people there to help us through this, as opposed to the clinical side saying, get your affairs in order. You have three to five years, which he had won. Um, but you know what really grateful came out of that? I met Jumana. Uh, Jumana was working with the doctor there. Okay. And Jumana was and a then that's what led you to us. I believe yeah. it. Jumana, the entire care service team is incredible. And it's unfortunate yes. that it took after the fact for you to find your way to us. But I love what this has turned into for you because I have a feeling this is what sparked it, but I'm going to ask you anyway. So why was it, especially with the experience you went through and losing your husband and then grieving that there's a whole lot to go through with that. Why, despite all of that, did you still want to be such a strong advocate for ALS and not only just be out there advocating and sharing your story, but to take it a step further and then to want to become an ambassador for the greater Chicago chapter to spread the word and an even and scale. That's a really great question because I've been asked that many times. Why would you want to deal with this with all you went through? How could I not? I went through this, Joe and I went through this virtually alone without a lot of support from, you know, other, I mean, we had friends and family and things, but they, they just, you had to have gone through it to really understand um, once we got involved, Joe and I got involved, we went through, Don died in February. Um, we went to the very first ALS advocacy convention and all of a sudden we had people who we didn't have to explain. They knew they felt us. We felt them. We finally could breathe and say, you get it. Yeah. You, you know, you're not just sympathetic, you're, emp you know, you're empathetic because you understand yeah. what it's like. And we saw people, uh, we saw this young woman with this really pretty pink hair in a wheelchair, unable to speak. And she probably was like in her early twenties and it was heartbreaking and it was so rewarding at the same time. So no one should go through this alone. And I've reached out to other people. I've even been in contact. You know, I live in a, a town where there were five people I know of who have had experience with ALS with their spouse. And they're not associated with the chapter, but I've oh. been in contact with them to try and help them through their journey. And um, I just, I can't imagine not helping people cope with this and you know not and, and because there's a lot of guilt involved too you know yeah. I took a few days off from going to the nursing home because I needed a break well had I known he was going to die that quickly maybe I wouldn't have taken that time off and I had to forgive myself for yeah. what I later thought of as um you know a, a fault it's it's definitely a lot to take on. And you're right. Absolutely nobody should go through this alone. And I think that's why this show is so important. The work the chapter does is so important. The work the ambassadors, every single volunteer, everyone that spreads the word, that is so important so that we can ensure that someone doesn't go through this alone. Because that it's you don't so have difficult. Yes so difficult and we have the services in place we have all the help we have the greatest care service team in the whole wide world Absolutely. <laughs> i'm gonna say that we have the people that can help and 
And it sounds awful because the end result is always going to be the same. It not, is. Not and forever. Then, We're going to get that cure. But as of right. now, the end result is the same. But we can take some of that burden off your shoulders so you can spend time with your loved one while you still have it. And, and that's, in a way, it's a bittersweet because when I meet people who either they have ALS or a spouse or a loved one has ALS, I know what the end journey is going to be. Yeah. And it kind of, you know, reinforces. I, in fact, um, uh, for a very long time, well, for, for quite a while, I was calling the Southwest support group, the members of the Southwest support group to remind them of the meeting. And I would talk to some of the people with ALS and I loved it. And it also broke my heart mm -hmm. to know what the end result is going to be, but I didn't care. I wanted to provide any support I could to any member of a family or a patient who was going through this because you can't do it on your own. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have to do it on your own. And exactly. I want to be a part of this fight till, you know, my dying day, because it's just the most hideous um, illness that anyone could ever have. I have a friend, a very, very dear friend who has had cancer three times. And she said, I have not gone through anything near what you and Don went through. And it is awful. And I am so glad though, that we have you. My favorite saying is sort of tragedy to triumph. And I have so much respect and admiration for people that can turn tragedies like what your family went through and those horrific things that no one should go through, you can take that, you can turn it into something beautiful and amazing, and you can continue that fight for Don. I think that is so beautiful and it's so admirable. So thank you for fighting for that cause. Thank Absolutely. you for just screaming it to the rooftops and trying to help every single person that Anyone is walking in Don's shoes. I love that. And actually, this is so exciting. We have uh, Scott Marcel is tuning in tonight. We're going to give him a shout out. Hey, Scott. I don't know if you guys caught it in a past episode, but he is actually kicking butt. He is battling ALS himself. He's a true Cubs fan, so he is watching the show. And I know he knows exactly what you went through because he is in this fight right now for himself. And Scott, we're sending you some love and keep on fighting. We love you. Actually, some questions were coming in for you, Anne, so I want to get those out real quick before we, we close the show. Let's see. Someone wants to know if there are any special traditions that you kept going on with in alternative ways after Don's diagnosis. Um, there were, and that was <laughs> on Christmas Day, we would make homemade pizzas and just stay oh. at home once Joe was older and, you know, my parents are gone and his parents were gone. So we started spending Christmas Day, the three of us, making our own homemade pizzas. And we would celebrate Christmas night that way. And we did that for quite a while. I love that. Do you still keep that up? Do you know, do you we've and your changed son still? it a little bit. We've gotten more involved with some other people. So we've changed it a little bit. But I will tell you this, that when we want to do a special dinner, Joe will always say, we got to make, because Don made the pizzas originally. So he would okay. say, we got to make dad's pizzas. I need dad's pizzas. So yes. Is there dad's a special pizzas. Don pizza? There is. We make our own sauce. We make our own dough. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big undertaking and we love every step of the way. Love that. So everybody watching, I always love to put out little challenges to the viewers for each show. So the, this week's challenge is going to be, you know what, you guys have a pizza, have mm -hmm. a fun night out, have a, make a pizza together with your loved ones in honor of Don. Think about him when you are eating that yummy homemade pizza. Mm -hmm. I like that. And you know what? Any excuse to have pizza, I am okay. definitely down for. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm going to have pizza tonight in honor of Don myself. Thank so I encourage you. everyone. Yes, I encourage everyone out there to do that. Let's do a pizza tonight. If you haven't had dinner yet, let's get a pizza for Don tonight. I think that's really Excellent. beautiful. Excellent. Absolutely. And what else? Someone else asked another question for you. Oh, does your son take after? You or your husband more? 
Um, you know what? He kind of takes after both of us. I am the extrovert. I am the um, Lucille Ball of the family. And Don was the accountant and the lawyer. So um, Don was a little bit more introverted um, and a little more serious on some things. But he could be just a goofy goofball, too. Um, so my son has taken both of us on. Um, he's great. He just finished his master's degree. He's working at a university. That child of mine is making far more money than I am. <laughs> and um, he just got engaged, so I'm so, so proud of him. Um, he takes after both of us. In fact, I, I ended up getting remarried. And my husband, my current husband, because Joe and I got so close during Don's illness that we could finish each other's sentences because we had to take care of them. So um, my current husband calls us Norma and Norman <laughs> Bates. And uh, because we can, we can finish each other's sentences and Aww. we are incredibly close. Um, I don't see him nearly as much as I'd like to because he doesn't, you know, he doesn't live here right now. He lives a few towns away, but but we stay in contact and we try every time we get together to remember something positive and funny. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had Christmas and we did some things that we used to do, like watch um, White Christmas every Christmas Eve while I went mm -hmm. while I wrapped Christmas presents. And so we try oh to God. keep those traditions alive and talk about his dad a lot. I love that. Well, huge congratulations to your son for master's degree, for his engagement, for all the wonderful things. We wish him a whole lot more. And if you're tuning in, uh, hello, congratulations, and say hi. Pop it in the comment section. Say hi to your mom. And um, if anyone else has any more questions, throw those in there. I love doing that. That's so fun. We want to know what you guys want to know from Anne and all that she has been through. She is a wealth of knowledge, and she is there to help anybody that needs it oh he did chime in did you I love it he did he said no. hi mom <laughs> so are you going to be having pizza tonight with us in honor of your dad because <laughs> i'm on that train now i'm absolutely on that train now well i want to um unless anyone else has any more questions they want to throw in there he is love it he will be having pizza tonight yeah i like that I love that. So besides Dan, Joe, who makes the best pizzas in the world? Ooh, good question. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love that. So while, while we wait for that to come through, um, I, as we were saying before, though, a ALS sucks. There's no better way to say it. It Absolutely. sucks. It, it is just, it takes so much. It takes everything. We are not going to stop until we find a cure. But along with all of the hardships that come from ALS, all the things it takes from a family, from an individual. There's so many negative things that come from ALS, but there are also some really beautiful and positive things. And those are my favorite stories to share on the show when, I, when we hear all the ways that these incredible individuals have turned something so negative into something beautiful. So on that line, what positives do you think have come from all of this that you and your family went through? One, we found such great strength that we didn't know we had because sometimes until you're really tested, you don't know how strong you are. Um, two, how much we are loved by people around us um, that came forward and really helped us out. We find great comfort in the ALS Association, Greater Chicago Chapter, um, we find a lot of, of love there and, um, connection. And I can remember telling Joe back many, you know, several years ago, cause Don died in 2010. Um, and I said to him, when life hands you lemons, sometimes you just have to eat the damn lemons and be grateful that you have them. So after this, there is nothing in life 
that could be as much of a barrier as that was. There was nothing you could do to make my life more difficult than then. And, you know, the one thing I wanted to mention that I forgot was the devastating financial aspect. Yeah. You know, we almost lost our house. We lost all of our savings, all of our investments because he couldn't work. He didn't have life. And, you know, when you have a, um, a disease like ALS, nobody's going to give you life insurance. And he lost his life insurance because he couldn't work anymore. So financially, it was a nightmare, but we got through it. And everyone else will get through it. Somehow you learn how to cope and you find what you need to do to get through and you will, but you can't do it alone. And you need the ALS Association, Greater Chicago Chapter. You need people to talk to. You need friends. You need to vent. You need to forgive yourself for the times that you're um, helping your spouse in the bathroom and you're starting to resent them. Mm. And you need to forgive yourself. That's a human emotion because mm. you didn't sign up for this. Mm. And now you're now you're in this role. It's okay. Don't beat yourself up. It's mm -hmm. okay to feel negative sometimes. Yeah. But you get up the next day and you do it all over again. And you and the next day you don't resent it. Yeah. And you it's say, true. I am so glad that I had the opportunity to help someone at their at their barest need. Yeah. I'm very fortunate to have had that experience. Not a lot of people do. Yeah. And all those things that you bring up, I, that's a lot of the stuff we sometimes don't talk about with ALS. A lot of times people that don't have any interaction with this don't realize what an ALS diagnosis actually means. And that is a caregiver who's doing everything for you. And that is so hard. And I think that's one of the many amazing things that this chapter has to offer is these support groups so that people can get together. Like you were saying, and people that have walked in your shoes, people that know what you're going through, that understand it, you guys can come together and you can vent it out together. You can talk about these challenges. You can get things off your chest. You can encourage each other. It's going to be better tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That stuff is priceless. It really is. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm so heartbroken that you didn't have the chapter when you were going through this journey, but I'm so happy that you found your way to us now and that you're able to spread the word and make sure that other people do have these services that, that you weren't lucky enough to have in that moment. Absolutely. And I will do anything I can, mm -hmm. you know, I, I can't always, I, I can't do as much as I'd like to, but I'm so grateful to do whatever I can. And you do. And we're so grateful and thankful for you and all the things that you have done. So thank you for being a part of our ALS thank family. Thank Seriously, you. Th thank you for spreading the word. And thank you for keeping Don's sort of memory alive and shouting his message too from the rooftop so that nobody else, let's get one step closer to nobody ever having to go through this. No. We need to end this. No. Yeah. Thank you so much, Susan, for this opportunity. No, I love it. Anything you want to say to everyone as you leave? I just want to tell everyone that as difficult as it is, it does get better. Um, and if you need any support, reach out to the association. The ambassadors are all here to help you in anything that we can. If you just need to vent and you just need to beat up on yourself and say, why do I feel resentful? Then give us a call. You know, will any ambassador will help you work through that because we've been through it and it's a human emotion. It's a horrible situation, but there are, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I love that. There is, there's a light at the end of the tunnel and you know firsthand that we are all capable of these things. Even if we don't feel it, we have mm -hmm. more strength than we could ever imagine. And until you're in those moments and it's tested, you might not see it, but it is there so we can get I, through You know, this. through this, I feel like Wonder Woman now that <laughs> I can combat anything that comes my way, you know? Of course you can, absolutely. Yeah. You and your son, you guys have got this. Like you said, you have been through the worst and you came out on the other side. 
Life is a cakewalk at this point. And yeah. everyone will. Everyone can. Yeah. And with the support of the ambassadors, we can help guide people and help um, support them and be a shoulder for them. And everyone can get through it. If I can do it, anyone can. Aww. Well, your son chimed in to say one last, he loves you. He loves Aww. his mom. Yes. I'm so My glad boy he is in. great. I adore him. <laughs> so thank you so much, Susan. Absolutely. Have a wonderful night and enjoy that pizza tonight. Absolutely. All, of you. <laughs> All right. You take care. I'll see you Bye. later. Thank Bye. you. Well, you guys, that was a quick episode tonight, but it was so incredibly important for this month of love. One of my favorites of the whole year. Love is so important and being there for each other, supporting each other and finding that inner strength is so incredibly important. If you want to learn more about the ALS Association, how to get involved, how to take advantage of all of these free resources that we have so that nobody has to walk this journey alone, please visit alsachicago.org. That link of the website is also up in the comment section. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And as always, tonight's challenge I want to remind you, let's have a pizza tonight. So everyone get a pizza for Don and let's give him a huge, let's send him all of our love up there in heaven where he is probably partying and making pizza for everybody up there, making pizza for all the angels. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will see you on our next live show, February 21st, right back here with some more incredible guests. Until then, have a very wonderful February, very happy Valentine's Day and... As always, be bright and shine your light.